hey, welcome back to the Magic Developed YouTube channel. Um, we come to you from the Magic Developed wiring room. This is a uh, probably a new uh, backdrop for us. This is where we build all of the harnesses for various race cars. Um, today we have a pretty cool video for you. We're going to be doing a overview of PDMs and what they are, what they do, if they're right for you, and what you need for a successful installation. There's a lot of videos out there that go over what a PDM is from a more advanced level. Um, there's not really a beginner friendly uh, video addressing what a PDM is, what you need. They all kind of expect you to already know the language. So we have Justin with us and he's going to be going over some uh, viewer questions about what a PDM is and if it's right for you. So um, first of all, uh, Brian S. wants to know, what is a PDM? So PDM on the most basic engineering breakdown is a power distribution module. That is what PDM actually stands for. The easiest way to have someone understand it is it essentially is replacing your relay and fuse box for most of the aim units. There's also a couple other PDMs and power switching modules, which we'll go over as well, that have a slightly different function and can handle slightly different things. Essentially, what you are doing is instead of using mechanical devices like relays and fuses to power items inside your car, you are using logic-based or code-based um, thought processes to determine how power is going to be spread out through the car. And then they can also kind of diagnose things if there's an open circuit somewhere? Yep. Yeah, the joys with, with code-based uh, logic processes is all PDMs will have a diag function. They all let you, they will notify you if there is a short to chassis. They'll let you know if there is an overdraw on the channel. Um, that's crucial for things like fuel pumps, most pumps kind of things. Once they start dying, the amp load really starts to go up. So you can catch a fuel pump dying. You can catch a couple other devices dying. And it also let you know if is it there's an open circuit it aim for instance can distinguish between a open circuit if there's supposed to be a load there when the channel is turned on and it's not or a short circuit where as soon as you turn the channel on it immediately drops it immediately goes way too high on amp pool or something like that catch it shut it down uh if you would like to program a amount of retries you can um but it really helps with diagnosis as well Amanda wants to know if this makes your car go faster. In a real world situation, the answer is no. This isn't like a magic pill that will find lap speed in the car. Um, now on the engineering level, we can say yes. Uh, there are multiple things we can do of PWM on certain circuits. Basically you can pull the amp load, make the car more efficient, pull less pull on the alternator, it should give you more horsepower due to due to we can discuss that all day long but the, the short of the answer is no in the endurance situation it can make diag faster it can make repairs faster if you have an incident on track or something that goes wrong we can diagnose it much quicker but in terms of lap speed no it won't um stewart wants to know why is it so expensive um he's seen a few other pdms on the market why is the aim unit more expensive uh, the AIM unit has a couple added features that most, I assume he's referring to like the hardwire PDM. There's a couple other PDMs on the market that are explicitly just a power distribution module. They take the main power in, traditionally directly from the battery, and they split it up, again, using code, using logic, to determine where the power wants to go. Uh, the big difference between a unit like that and the AIM unit is the AIM unit also has the built-in built in data logger functions, the display functions, all of the normal stuff of a normal AIM dash you get in the PDM as well as the power distribution module add-ons. So everything we're normally used to, lap timing, data analysis, um, GPS to do, you know, we can sort data by lap, go over a lot of the functions on Race Studio 3. Also, it is using Race Studio 3 software, which is a software if you are used with AIM products, it feels very natural. It's very easy to go through and set up a PDM as opposed to learning a whole new UI to set up a unit that just effectively only distributes the power through the car. 
James I wants to know the general setup of the dash display and what would be needed when setting up a PDM. Um, so I think we'll probably do that in a part two. Uh, we're kind of segueing this as a series for the installations inside of my personal race car and Dylan's race car. Um, those cars are easily replicable cars in terms of the physical chassis package. Uh, it is common car, a K20 DC Integra. Um, mine is a little bit less common with it being a secret motor that we haven't talked about yet in, a, in my old Miata chassis. Um, th those will be great platforms to show how a PDM can transform cars that are relatively basic at the end of the day. Um, in terms of general configurations and displays, we'll probably have a couple examples there. We'll do a screen overlay on Race Studio 3. Um, for items like our configurations, probably versus like the 72 configuration, which is an endurance car. There's a lot more things going on in there. Um, we'll also go over how to set up your dash display and alarms, where we have certain items um, we prioritize on different pages. We really like to let the drivers drive the car. And in reality, when something becomes important, you should probably let them know. Um, this has been a big debate, even currently in all levels of motorsports, even going up to pro levels. Um, we just got done setting up a radical team and completely changing their pages around uh, to allow the driver to drive. And when something on the back end, being water temp, oil pressure, do 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 those items, that mechanics are worried about, when they become a problem, then we let the driver know. Um, the internal struggle is how much information do you feed the driver? The driver doesn't care about if the water temp is 190, 190.8, or 170. Is the coolant temp okay? Yeah, let them drive. Right, so we use pop-up messages, we'll show how to configure those to really get that information across. And if it's a much bigger alarm, how to do things like have the alarm do a page flip. So it can flip to warm-up pages or mechanic pages that we set in the background. Um, Larry's car has that, for instance, when a wheel speed sensor fails, it will actually flip to the work page that shows a lot more information, but it has all four wheel speed sensors in the corner and you'll be able to see which wheel speed sensor has failed. The reason why we did that is the driver could actually call it in while they're on track. And we can have the wheel speed sensor ready to go and accomplish that during a pit stop as opposed to try and do the diag process. Um, yeah, I think we can go through all that on a Cool Race Studio video. And essentially what we're trying to do with letting the driver drive is instead of having 5,000 gauges telling you each individual thing about your car, um, we're pairing it back to things the driver wants to see. So predictive lap time, lap time yeah. uh, rev indicator, gear, maybe depending, gear. Depending on what car it is, if it's a sequential box or a, like, like we had to on the Radical guys. Gear takes a much bigger precedence in the, the display. If it's an H pattern, we don't usually don't put gear on there. You kind of know what gear you moved into last because you moved it there physically. Um, but on sequential boxes, it is easy to lose track of what gear you're in. Um, yeah, so, and yeah, it's essentially pairing back your uh, A-pillar gauge pods, your bezel gauge pods, into one little screen that'll just show exactly what the driver wants. That's fully customizable by the team and fully customizable by the driver. So, who is a PDM for? Like, is it for the average? garage uh, builder or is it more you need a shop to actually do this you definitely need to have a strong base in in wiring to understand how to do a pdm um, pdms should really be there, there's two options uh i guess there's a great segue here the two options are in your build phases if the car is already built and say you are a spec racer or a a a class where you have to keep a lot of the the factory modules. Um, I'm thinking Spec E46 here. I'm thinking Spec Miata, where you can't tap into a CAN bus, for instance, and get a lot of data out of it. We have a separate product that was developed here in Northern California by a local racer called MicroPDM, Matt Pruden. Um, 
This is a great little unit for being able to, to turn on and off certain things inside of factory modules. Um, BMWs, for instance, use a lot of ground triggers for things like their wiper switches, their headlight switches. Uh, DSC on and off is actually a power supply. Um, but basically you're sending information out to, to your, your grounding or providing power to wires for the modules to understand what you want them to do. Um, Micropedium does use the blink ring keypad to accomplish this. They also have a lot of great logic-based statements. So like when you turn on the key, for instance, on a BMW, you can have the DSC pin go live without you having to touch the button to turn the DSC off for you instead of having to hold the button physically and do it every time. Um, they do do these in high side and low side modules as well. That's important because you need to figure out Japanese cars, for instance, like to high side everything, meaning provide power to the module to turn it on or off to change the state. More European cars really like to low side, which means provide ground. So once the, the module sees ground on that wire, that it will change the state as needed. Um, the next option after that is a PDM-08. So this has eight channels. Uh, the main focus behind this is you have, there's two real focuses we've found with these ones. You can either run a 30 minute sprint car. So something we define not as, as complicated as an endurance car off of this guy completely. Or the other option you can do is in the Specky 46 realm, a couple other realms. We found this is a great way to add the main power devices that you want to add without having to rewire the, the whole car to do it. So if you want to throw this in there, be able to control your headlights, say add a radio, add your cool suit, um, power the radio directly, power the starter directly, items like that. You can do it through this unit without having to rewire the whole car. Uh, this has been a very nice halfway install for people. They give a very nice clean solution for adding these devices without having to do a bunch of, of wire tapping and or going through the factory junction box those kind of items or factory um, fuse box for a non-German vehicle. Um, this has been a nice solution for that and gives you the capability to also then get an aim display with the aim logging, the aim track analysis, all those functions. The last one in this discussion is the PDM32. This one really needs to be planned out from day one of your build. This is not necessarily a add-on device. We would much rather go micro PDM or PDM08 to do an add-on device to a car that's already running, already functioning. This is to be planned out as the main fuse box for your entire car. Um, this has to get planned out from day one. So like Larry's 72 car, that was definitely designed out from day one uh, because that is an endurance car. It's very complicated. We ran a lot of of parallel circuits, for instance, to try to avoid if, if one item gets taken down, it doesn't take down items that we want to leave on. Um, transponders, for instance, uh, endurance cars have to have two transponders on the car. We decided to fill two channels with just each transponder. That way, if a rock, if debris, if something happens to the transponder in the front of the car, then it doesn't take out the transponder at the rear of the car. So we still have one functioning transponder. Um, that's the choice of what 32 channels gives you as opposed to eight, but this is for from day one, no wires in the car, real tub kind of build. You're going with this guy. What should you, uh, ask an installer when choosing one of these? Like what, what obviously our viewers aren't, some of them aren't from the Sacramento area. So if they're going to choose a, an installer, what should they know? prior to ins installation? Uh, you want to ask a couple of questions. Like the main thing is going to be because of PDM, especially like a PDM 32 and in those instances, you're really going to want to know how much experience does either the installer have with the chassis um, if you're doing an add-on unit like a PDM 08 and or how much experience do they have with actual PDM installs. Again, this is you're basically replacing your whole fuse box and relay with code. And you need to be able to, the installer needs to be able to understand the code correctly 
in a sense, to actually make things function when you want them to function. You have to tell the statement of, when this happens, I want this to happen. Um, the other things you want to see a little bit unknowns or, or small items you want to ask about is, you know, what kind of wire are they using? Um, we have many options up here that we use. Anything from Tefsel, which is motorsports aviation based, tinned, usually stranded wire. Um, that's a very high end solution. You can also go something as low as TXL. That's a very common solution as well. Very cost efficient. Larry's, Larry, 72 car is entirely done in TXL. Um, it's a very efficient solution price wise. And it's a wire that is much higher quality than most OE. It is, it is a wire that definitely get job done. Last quest, last thing you should talk about is kill switches. Um, if you think about it, right, most of your power is going to be separated through this power distribution module. How are you going to kill power? Uh, we use Cartec kill switches. They're based out of England. Um, this one, especially the XR, is actually designed to be used with a PDM directly. Um, it is made to turn on the PDM and it sends out a signal to turn off the PDM if the kill switch has been activated. Uh, these are a ground side unit. I know that sounds very unnatural here in the States. Most everything we do here in the States seems to be a positive kill where the rocker switch everyone's kind of used to and, and common from um, kill the power and how the power gets moved. It basically cuts the power in between the battery and all the devices in the car. Um, these guys kill the ground. So you actually take the ground wire from the battery and run it directly to this unit. This actually isolates the battery completely, um, separating it from the circuit so no power can flow whatsoever. Um, also difference is, is it's buttons for kill switches, not your traditional rocker. Like I said, you get two buttons in these systems. One for the driver, which has a little indicator LED that'll tell you if there is a fault or something, you'll see it from here. And then there's actually one to be mounted on the outside of the car for the emergency workers to be able to hit it. Um, beyond that, it's also gonna be, you know, your trust in, in the installer. Um, some installers, some race shops, most race shops don't want to do PDM installs. They are a very labor intensive project. Um, so it'll be people that are, are predominantly, probably more focused in wiring than actual wrenching, for instance, that will, will take on a PDM install. Well, that was a high level overview of what the PDMs are and if they're right for you. If you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to drop a comment or email us at info at magicdevelop.io. We'll be happy to answer your questions. And, um, and if you are outside of the Sacramento area, we can maybe point you in the directions of a reputable installer. If you are interested in a PDM, uh, if you are in Sacramento, um, again, drop us an email and we can get you sorted out. And if you want to buy any AIM products for your own builds, um, hit us up.